So Sketch just released version 69 and nah, I'm not gonna make a joke about that. <laughs> But I wanted to show you a couple of things about their new components panel and the new color variables. And obviously it's a push to make design systems even easier and in many cases it's gonna be fine but you don't really need to be building a design system to use these features because even if you're taking just a standard simple systemic approach to what you're building it's still gonna be useful so you don't really need to think in terms of like a huge system of components even if you only have a couple of components it's still gonna be really really useful so let's see how it looks like so the official promo video shows the color variables and how you can update them and also the new component view that basically exists right next to the canvas and obviously if you just started a document if you're gonna switch to the components panel you're not really gonna see anything so let's create a new artboard and start building some components also using the color variables at the same time. So I'm creating a typical button that's gonna be 200 by 50 and I'm gonna round the corners just a little bit and then pick a color. And when 15 years ago I was working at an agency doing website designs, I still remember one of the colors to this day and it's this specific shade of red. So just create a variable, pick a name and then click create. And I'm just gonna call it main red. So we use this red for all the materials for one of the clients and I just kind of worked on it so much that I still remember it. And if you use forward slash in the name like I just did, it's gonna create it in a group. So then you can have lots of color variables and actually group them. So I'm adding some text and creating a button and that's gonna be my very first component. And of course the main problem with all buttons is badly aligned labels, so I'm just making sure the label is in the center and adjusting it to be right. So one last thing before creating a symbol is adjusting the bounding box of the text so we can actually fit in longer labels in there. And then I click create symbol and I can also use that forward slash trick to create a group for all the buttons and then just call this particular one red. And to have some variety in our symbols, I'm gonna make a profile picture symbol. So it's just gonna be a circle with a border and a shadow, and it's gonna be filled with one of the faces from the free face library. And I'm gonna put this component in the UI group, so I'm just gonna call it UI forward slash and then the name. And if we go to the components panel now, we can see two distinct groups with one component in each one. You can change the name of the component, you can modify the export settings and even modify the layout over here. And this is really good especially for buttons, so for our red button I'm gonna change the layout to horizontal and center, that way we'll be able to actually stretch the button every direction. And when you have groups for components you can also sort them. And now that we have one button let's duplicate it and create a blue button. And obviously for the blue button I'm also gonna make a new color variable for that blue color. And just to show you the difference, for this color variable I'm not gonna use the forward slash, I'm just gonna name it. And as you can see the blue is part of this document, while the red is part of a folder called main. Now if I go to the components view I can see that all my buttons are in the same group. Now I'm gonna create a rectangle to pick some colors from and then change the red button to the blue one. And you can do it the same way as before by just clicking the symbol and changing it to the next symbol that's the exact same size. And they all appear on that list. And I'm gonna make a couple of copies of the blue button just to show you something else. So each copy is gonna be a slightly different size. Now when I go to the variable, click it and then edit it, I can modify the color and when I click update it's gonna update across all the instances. And you can use the standard sketch data override to pick different faces from the random database, just like this. That helps to keep the component the same exact style, but allows you to have a lot of different faces. So I'm gonna edit the color variable again and change the blue to a darker shade. And just like that it all changes across all the components. But what's really cool is that you also have this option of swap at original size. So if you have it off, it's gonna change the component without adjusting the size. But if you turn it on, it's gonna change the component to their standard size, the one that it was set at. Sketch 69 is a really good update. I think it's gonna make my workflow even faster and it's gonna make those components a lot easier to manage. And they're also promising real-time collaboration in the next update, so I guess everyone should be happy. I'm not a huge fan of this, but well, 
what can I do? So what do you think of those updates? Are you gonna use them daily or are there just gimmicks that you're not really gonna be using at all? Let me know in the comments and for now, thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe and see you next time. Cheers!